Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Robin Basselin. And I'm Ryan Gertzma. Spotlight uses a special English method of broadcasting. It is easier for people to understand no matter where in the world they live. In 1989, the government of Romanian dictator Nicolae Ceausescu lost power. Suddenly, the country became more open to the world. And the world discovered the terrible situation of Romanian orphans. Thousands of children without parents lived in crowded and dirty conditions. They were in state institutions, and they were not receiving good care. For years, news organizations told the story of Romania's orphans. However, as the children grew, people forgot about the orphans of Romania. Many of the older orphans left the government institutions. They began living on the streets. They had no home, no support, and little education. These orphans grew into adults, adults with many problems and needs. Today's Spotlight is on the work of Cataline Bachu and Global Teen Challenge. Cataline has devoted his life to the forgotten orphans of Romania. His work with Global Teen Challenge shows the power of love to rescue the forgotten. The problem of orphans in Romania started during the rule of Ceausescu. The country was very, very poor, and parents did not have enough money to care for their children. However, Ceausescu wanted women to have a lot of children to build a strong workforce. So he changed the laws He made it illegal for married people to use birth control. He even made a law that married women must have five or more children. Officials encouraged women to leave their babies in government institutions, orphanages. Under Ceausescu's government, Romanian parents left nearly 10,000 children in orphanages every year. The orphanages did not have enough trained workers. The workers could not even meet the basic physical needs of the children. So they did not have time to show the children the love they needed. When Ceausescu's government lost power, there were over 100,000 orphans in Romania. Around this time, Catalin Bachu and his wife, Oltita, traveled to Bucharest, the capital city of Romania. Catalin was young and intelligent. He wanted to make a lot of money in business. And he wanted to make his money in Germany. So Catalin and Oltita went to Bucharest to get legal papers to move to Germany. However, when they arrived, they were surprised by what they saw. Catalin explained to Spotlight. Old Tita and I saw a shocking sight. Hundreds of street children 
in a busy and dirty city of two and a half million people. Many of them were using drugs. They all seemed lost. Most of them were under ten years old. Old Tita had tears in her eyes. Many of these street children were orphans. They had grown up in the government orphanages, but had run away. They had escaped. They thought any place would be better than the orphanages. But the streets were cold and hard. The winters were freezing. The children had to sleep in warm sewers under the ground, where cities kept their waste. To survive, many of the children became involved with crime and violence. The Bachus did not like the sight of so many suffering children in Bucharest. They decided that they could never live there. They wanted to leave immediately and go to Germany. However, that night, Catalin and Oltita stayed with a friend in Bucharest. Catalin told Spotlight, "The friend we were staying with was working with street children." He was working together with a group of wonderful, young, and excited Christians. It deeply touched me what they were trying to do. They were sacrificing their jobs and lives to rescue street children. Catalin was a Christian, but he had never before. Thought about sacrificing his life for other people. When Catalin saw everything his friend was doing, he felt like he needed to do something. Catalin explains. I thought of something that changed my direction. Every person that calls themselves Christian. Should live their life like this. After that visit, the Bachus completely changed their life plan. Instead of moving to Germany, they began working with street children in Bucharest. They started by opening a girls' home called House of Hope. House of Hope. Provided a warm and loving place for girls who needed to get away from the streets. House of Hope became well known. Many hospital and business workers called House of Hope when they found troubled girls. Everyone knew that House of Hope would help. However, as the street children got older, their needs changed. Many had been living on the streets for fifteen years or longer, especially the young men. They did not have an education, and many were drug addicts. Drugs controlled their lives. Children's centers like House of Hope were not created for adults. They also did not have programs for drug addicts. Catalin felt especially bad for these forgotten young men. He wanted to find a way to help them. Catalin's dream. Was to build a home for young drug addicts. In a video about his work, Catalin said, 
These young men have no place to go. Although they use drugs, they are looking so hard for a way to get out of this situation. So, in 2003, Kataline began working with the international Christian organization called Global Teen Challenge, or GTC. GTC helps young people who are drug addicts. The young adults live in GTC group homes. GTC provides education and job training. They also provide the young adults with mental health and spiritual guidance. GTC has over 1,000 centers in 80 countries. And it has one of the highest success rates of any anti drug program in the world. Katalin explains the goal of the program. We need a place where we can really develop the men's hearts and minds through education and everything it will take. We want to make a commitment to them. We want to change them into givers of hope. It took three years for Katalin to raise enough money to build the home. Katalin writes that it was a miracle. And today, Global Teen Challenge Bucharest has a home where young men can come and live for a year. At the GTC home, Katalin teaches the young men about the hope of God. This completely changes their lives. Many young men who have completed the program are now working for Global Teen Challenge. They started out forgotten and hopeless. But one man decided to give up his own idea about making lots of money. He decided to sacrifice his life to work with orphans and young adults on the streets of Bucharest. And now, many forgotten and hopeless have turned into givers of hope. The writer of this program was Jennifer Hawkins. The producer was Ryan Gertzma. The voices you heard were from the United States and the United Kingdom. All quotes were adapted and voiced by Spotlight. You can find this program and others on our website at www.radioenglish.net. This program is called Forgotten and Found in Bucharest. We hope you can join us again for the next Spotlight program. Goodbye.